Today I'm making an SD card wallet. I drew up the pattern on Illustrator, which you can buy from a link down in the description. All you have to do is download it, then print it out, and if you don't have a heavier stock to print on, you can just glue it onto some poster board and then cut it out. For this wallet, I need to cut out two of these shapes. I included both versions in the pattern to avoid confusion, but you don't have to cut them both out. Just cut out one and use it twice on the leather, but you only cut out that window in the middle for one of them. Since this piece will be going into production, I'm using one of our standard leather options, three to four ounce chestnut skirting from Wicked and Craig. I trace out the pattern lightly using one of my new favorite tools, a Palo Santo scratch all from District Leather Supply. And then I cut out my pieces making sure to keep a sharp blade, especially through some of the more intricate and round cuts. For the window I punched four small holes in the corners with my awl and used those for my start points for each cut. When you're cutting out a negative space like this, it helps to start your cuts in the corners and go about three quarters of the way down, stop, turn it around and then begin another cut from the opposite corner and meet in the middle. For the SD card slots, I'm using the pattern to make marks for the stitching and the cutouts. But instead of trying to cut those indents by hand, I'm going to use a die punch that I found at Tandy that happens to be the perfect size for these little SD card slots. Now before I glue or stitch anything, I'm going to make sure I paint the edges on the areas that are otherwise too hard to get once stitched up. Then I'll apply a small bead of adhesive using this awesome little precision squeeze bottle. Most of you know that I've been using squeeze bottles for a while, but this is one of the best ones I've used yet. You can pick them up at District Leather Supply. I'll have a link down below. I almost always order my leather gum pasted and finished on the flush side, right from the tannery, but sometimes it still feels a little dry and scratchy on the back side. And plus, I've been dying to use this new product called Flush Finisher. Again, it's from District Leather Supply and it allows you to get a nice, smooth, pasted, clean finish on the flush side and it doesn't require any burnishing. You just apply one or two coats and let it dry and it works beautifully. I'll show you what it looks like finished once it's dry a little later in the video. Here I'm making the stitch lines in between the pockets. I decided to use my Texo 2750 Pro, which might be a bit too much machine for this little wallet, but I like to see what it can do. And aside from some light marks underneath from the feed dog, it turned out great. Flush finisher is now dry and it's looking awesome. So now I'm just going to fold this piece up and see where the bottom half of my button snap goes and I'll make a mark with my awl. Then I'll punch the hole and set the snap using a hand press. But as you probably know, this can also be done using a hand setter and a mallet. Then I'll apply my last bit of adhesive. And for those wondering, I'm using Aqualim 315 from District Leather Supply. So far, it's the best water-based adhesive I've used, and it just happens to work really well in these little squeeze bottles. Then I'll use a precision knife to trim the edges, and really flatten out the edges by sanding on my electric sander. Now 
Now I'm going to use my number one Palo Santo edger to clean up the mushroomed edges that I got from sanding. I want to round off the bottom corners of this wallet. I actually want a fairly large radius on these corners too. Just a personal preference. So I'm using a round corner punch that I found at Tandy and it turned out great. I start doing a light burnish here. I usually wait to do this after I stitch, but sometimes we shake things up here, fam. Then I'll use an edge guide tool to mark a line and then stitch it up. I guess this has to happen every now and then. Basically this wallet's ruined, I wouldn't be able to sell this. You know, for a first attempt, I guess it's okay, these things happen. The top part of the stitch turned out awesome, everything lined up great. You know, it looks exactly how I was hoping it would. So basically this inside panel slipped a little bit and became unlevel with the outside panel. And so my backside stitch ended up hanging over the edge, which you can see there. It's really frustrating when you put a lot of work into something and then it basically becomes unusable. <laughs> I mean, I could technically still use this, but you know, I hold myself to a standard and I can't be carrying around janky stuff. So that's all right, I'll make another one. But I'm gonna stick with this video. Hopefully you can all kind of embrace this mistake with me. So anyway, let's finish this thing. This is where that light burnish will come in handy. I don't go all out with wax and everything because then the paint won't stick. But if you don't slick it down a little bit, then all those loose fibers will make it really hard to get a clean, smooth coat of paint. So as long as you prep it right, you can get away with doing only one coat. Then I'll punch the hole and set the second part of this button snap and we're good to go. Trying to play it cool, but I'm a little disappointed that I had a screw up on this one. Overall, I'm really happy with the design and we're definitely gonna put this one into production. It's got just that little Western flair, our maker stamp on the back, spots for about six SD cards, which is plenty for me. And there's even some hidden pockets in here if you need to like, I don't know, throw a receipt in there or uh, some more cards, adapters, whatever. So I'll have the pattern linked down below for this if you want to try making it yourself. Big thanks to District Leather Supply for sponsoring this video. Uh, you guys know Bill over there at DLS is a good friend of mine. He carries some really quality, yet affordable stuff. They supply you with uh, really unique and normally hard to get leather uh, that you can buy in reasonable quantities. So go visit my link down below. It'll take you to their homepage and do a little shopping. I also wanted to give a thank you to Texo. They're an affiliate partner of ours. And it's nice to have them in our corner because one of the questions that I get over and over is what sewing machine should I buy or just general questions about sewing machines. And um, that's one of the things that hooked me on Texo. I was doing some shopping for a cylinder arm machine and I ended up giving them a call just to get some advice on what machine I should probably pick up. And I was able to talk to Ron for a little bit and he helped me narrow it down to the machine that I really needed and uh, one that I'd be really happy with and I haven't looked back yet. No regrets, I love my 2750 Pro. And if you're just getting into leather craft or the sewing game in general, you should definitely give him a call and he can walk you through and let you know um, exactly what machine you should get. No commitments at all. But if you do pick one up from Texo, make sure you let them know that I sent you and they'll throw in a free accessory package with your purchase. All right, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.